Hello, everybody. To set the scene, could you kind of give in few few sentences why is the healthcare industry today in your mind? As a comparison, um, if you were to get into any operating system and accept those failure rates and translate that into healthcare, just think of what the hospital results would be, right? Or go to an airport and expect the crash rate to be equivalent of what happens with our computers. Um, you make your own conclusion from there. There's a significant amount of room for revolution in healthcare in terms of digitization. Absolutely. Just to add on this, I mean, this is a, a uh, space in which the challenges are massive. We are talking of um, a population which is aging. Uh, we are talking about chronic diseases of massive scale. We're talking about COPD, uh, congestion, heart failure, diabetes, and so on and so forth. And so the uh, healthcare system today is under a major uh, stress. And this is uh, creating not only uh, challenges in terms of access uh, to care, but also, as you mentioned, uh, problems in, in terms of quality of care. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rates in terms of uh, adverse events, uh, hospital in um, acquired infections are, are pretty scary. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think uh, digital health is all about finding a solution to improve uh, the overall picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, as the, the digitalization is clearly one of the big trends. I'm sure that we have in the room a lot of start who would be kind of interested to hear what could they do? What could be the kind of things which need to be changed there? Yeah, maybe two trends which we feel uh, are going to have a major impact on um, what, what the equipment and the solutions we bring into the hospitals are following. The sensor business, uh, miniaturization, and wireless technology on one hand, and uh, uh, IT and network computing on the other. Mm -hmm. So I would call that medical grade uh, wearables and cloud computing. Cloud computing is all about getting the data and providing to the clinical decision, uh, clinical decision support tools to the clinicians at the point of care. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out that today the clinicians are computing the massive uh, load of data they are getting from all the devices around the patients, they are computing this themselves in their brain, doing the best they can, but it's very difficult. And uh, they are under the stress of making a mistake at any time and injuring the patient. Mm. And again, just to build on that, 30% of uh, the intensive care doctors, 35% uh, of the intensive care nurses today in, in Europe uh, are under burnout conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, they, they need help, uh, definitely. <laughs> one, one, two, right? Yeah. Uh, medical grade wearables was one of the interesting words you said. I mean, how far is this from a medical grade wearable? I, I think uh, here there is a, there's a convergence from a technology standpoint. Uh, I think the, 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 um, the big decision for a, for a startup when you know, you're developing this, this uh, type of technology is whether you want to go through the hard path of getting it approved for medical use mm. or whether you want to use it more outside of the medical um, space. And of course, we feel that the value that we'll be really bringing is going to be on the medical application. So, uh, devices which will be used by uh, caregivers or will be used by end patients but under uh, prescription from doctors. Mm. Let me put some angle on that because GE Healthcare is about 20 billion. That's a business where Pierre is. Essentially, it's all so sales within the hospital. Yeah. Now, in GE Ventures, we are the, the venture fund of GE with a set of different goals that ultimately are there to converge. So when you sit here and you say, how is the healthcare industry going to be in 10 years? Hospitals are going to be for the sickest of the sick. Yeah. The lowest cost needs to be the prevalent way of uh, tracking and managing the patient with appropriate care. Mm. And that means a gigantic transition of patients outside of the hospital. Mm. So the definition of what a hospital is, 
in the U.S. is changing very quickly. You have hospitals acquiring primary care mm. uh, uh, physicians and practices. You have who is at risk changing. Hospitals are becoming providers and payers at the same time. Consumers woke up between six and four years ago in the U.S. and were told, congratulations, you are on the, our consumer-driven plan. And you know, people took a couple of years to react, but basically it means your deductible has gone from $2,000 to $6,000, mm. and you have no tools in your pocket to understand what to do with the money or how, how your incentives should change. Yeah. So to answer your question on what startups can do to lead on that change, ultimately it has to be to align yourself to that eventual future by following a couple of basic principles. And I've seen very, very pot high potential technologies here, but I think a few of them need an adjustment, which are follow the money. Understand whose pocket are you taking money from and putting. Because if you're taking money from the pocket who controls the patient, and assuming that you're going to be able to change the workflow and move that patient to another place that may potentially be better care for the patient in the long run, it's not going to happen. And that's not only in the US, I think that is even in, in systems that are payer provider. The other elements of it are try to accelerate the change. Yeah. So I've seen so several interesting uh, platforms for patient engagement. Um, you were asking about wearables. It would be interesting to see, as you were saying, who wears some wearable here. And yeah, Let, let's do a small test. Um, in the audience, all, all the people who are wearing a wearable or at least have one at home they have tried. Could you put your hands up? And if I uh, keep the hands up, please. And if, if, I, if I ask uh, how many of you were having the same wearable six months ago, keep your hands up. We have a couple of the. It, it kind of shows quite illustratively how we have seen the kind of consumerization. People are starting to track their, track their health. Uh, how do you turn the big company to follow that trend? Is it this guy? Yeah, maybe, maybe just to build on the value of the wearables in the hospital space, because I, I, I totally agree. I mean, monitoring is now uh, an ubiquitous approach. Uh, but just to kind of bring it back to the patients here, if you imagine an intensive care patient, you will find him covered with cables all over the place and tubes and everything. And this is making the work of the nurses extremely difficult. When you start transporting this patient from the ICU to the CT scan for an exam, when you're moving the patients across the care continuum, all these cables are making it very dangerous for the patient, very uh, stressful for the nurses. Mm. Imagine uh, the same situation with body-worn sensors streaming data wirelessly into the backbone of the hospital. Imagine that data being processed and then being sent back to the user mm. with powerful algorithms driving um, decision support. Yeah. That, that's mean, kind of the vision of where I see it from the hospital standpoint. Yeah. I mean, there are clearly kind of a couple of world, worlds. One is the hospital standpoint. There is the completely non-hospital, even close people. And there is something in the mi middle, but, right? But, but that's the short term. OK. You see, in, in we all end up in a hospital, right? In the long term, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is there are many startups that have uh, what is essentially an interesting gadget. Uh, our investment thesis is that there's going to be a rapid confluence of the acute level, highest, uh, uh, highest clinical validation technologies with the consumables. And the way it's going to happen is via where 90% of the cost is, which is in the chronic disease. Mm. And that's where we're putting our money at the moment. Um, even if it is a consumer wearable, we, what we believe is that the real savings, when you talk about the goals of the European Commission to save X amount of money in the next, and the numbers all over, all over the place, it's going to come from originally the sick patients that shouldn't be in the hospital, mostly are not in the hospital. Yeah. But to your point of where is the confluence? The confluence is because we backed a company in Israel with two people two years ago. Um, it, it already had a CE mark because it had been incredibly efficient, just like Fin uh, technology is mm -hmm. in leveraging contractors. Within the year and a half that we've been investors, they have generated data to, via a set of headphones, 
measure the amount of pressure, the intracranial pressure you have in your head. That's terrible when one of my kids actually fell down the stairs a few years ago, and we go to the hospital, and short of drilling a hole back in the head, there's not a lot that they can do. Yeah. They take a CT scan, it doesn't say much, etc. Imagine putting a set of headphones and seeing it on your iPhone. You yeah. don't have to go to a hospital or anything. Now, that is a clinical technology of the highest acuity. Now, I would like to have that can also look at my respiration rate, heart rate, heart rate variability, and a number of other things. None of them are proven yet. That's the confluence. So what you need, and I would, what I would encourage entrepreneurs, is to go for uh, accepting what we believe is a fundamental tenant of the healthcare industry, even in wellness, which is that healthcare, not only sick care, is going to continue to be physician-mediated. And what it means is that eventually you want, you want your app to be either prescribed or given to you by your employer and given some incentive, et cetera, you're going to achieve that via clinical validation. So mm. work with true clinical data, mm. and your consumable will do better. Mm. We don't have too much time here. Uh, Slush is uh, wrapping up in a few hours. Why are you here? What brought you kind of, you're running 20 billion business, OK, we are from Finland, but still. And, and you're running the kind of one of the huge uh, healthcare yeah. venture in funds. I mean, my, my perspective on this is that we have a lot to learn from the startups, big time. Uh, we've got this big vision of the industrial internet uh, for healthcare, which is all these smart devices and this new network and this connectivity piece. And we know that we're not going to be able to do this on our own, no way, despite our size. And so the way we want to go about it, and this is what we've been doing in Finland, where we have our biggest uh, R&D center. We've got four working specifically around uh, the monitoring themes. But the one in Finland is working on clinical decision support and smart devices. Mm. We know that we need to reach out to the local ecosystem, research centers, the universities, and the startups. And by working together, we might uh, actually get where we want and actually impact the quality of care. And we've opened a, a, uh, a village in our premises. Uh, we've transformed the premises, making it much more collaborative. And we've invited a lot of uh, startups to come and work with us in this. In this. And, and for us, it's a good start. And, and again, a fantastic event. And thanks for the invitation. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.